it's time for another edition of Doctor and the Dude. I'm Dr. Jim Siebert, and the dude is my favorite hurricane hunter, Josh Morgan. And Josh, how are you doing today? Real good. Nice to see you again, Dr. Jim. Well, let's peel back the historical view today and get right into what is your, or what was, your most memorable hurricane that you've covered, and you've covered a lot of them. Yeah, I've been in 60 hurricanes. I would say probably the sure number one is Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas. Uh, came ashore on Great Abaco Island with sustained winds of 185 miles an hour. That ties it with the 1935 Labor Day hurricane as the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in North America. And it was scary to go through, let me just say. Now, when you say you were scared, what makes you more scared? Or is it a combination of the wind and the water or your location? Or how? Do, what makes you right there on the edge? Well, you know, uh, I would say I have equal respect for both the wind and the water in a hurricane. So two things I go through in my head like a checklist when I'm getting ready to, to sort of penetrate a storm is one, am I high enough above sea level to avoid the storm surge? And then two, am I in a strong enough house or building to withstand the wind? And, uh, you know, as long as those two things are checked off, I might be a little kind of concerned about it, but I'm good. And I hope that everyone who's going to go through a hurricane checks those two things off. For example, how did you ride out or where did you ride out the storm in Dorian? In Dorian, you know, I knew it was going to be a massive storm surge. So I, I found actually there was a school on a hill. So I was high enough above sea level, about 30 feet. And then the school was made of concrete. Now that didn't totally save the building. A lot of it collapsed anyway, but it was enough to protect us at least until we got to the eye. And then we were able to relocate to another building to ride out the backside. Now, I understand how you track storms, you're hunting storms all over the world. What are the challenges to chase or, or, to, or to follow a storm uh, in the Bahamas, say, versus in the United States? Well, hunting storms in different parts of the world, they, they, every part of the world creates its own challenges. I would say in bah the Bahamas, the main challenge is that it's a bunch of widely spaced islands. If I'm hunting storms, in the United States, like, you know, in Texas, you could just drive to get right to the perfect spot to get good meteorological data. In the Bahamas, you got to just pick an island and then hope that that's the right one. It's like playing roulette. And sometimes you pick right and sometimes you pick wrong. Yeah, and it's not like you can jump in a boat at that time and head on over to the next door island. Uh, that's not going to work. And when you're done with the storm and, and, and it's all over and, you're, and with your viewers and the people that see all of your work, what's the takeaway that you want them to have after you've completed a storm? The thing that gives me the most pleasure in terms of like sharing storms is when people look at my videos and they say, wow, that looks really scary. I don't want to ever go through that. I hope that the kind of terror that my videos inspire uh, sort of provokes people to do the, the, the right thing when a hurricane's coming and just like be careful and a lot of times just get out of the way. You know, I've said it so many times on the air is that when you're told to evacuate, just evacuate. It's pretty simple, right? Because it's not something like the storm's just going to appear out of nowhere. And so that's a, kind of a big deal. Now, I understand that you have some questions for me today. Oh, yeah. No, I've actually been wanting to, to catch up with you about this. There have been a lot of seasonal forecasts. What's going to happen this hurricane season? Wanted to know your take on it. Well, my take is that we are going to see a more active year again. It looks like another La Nina is forming in the Pacific, which means the water in the Pacific Ocean and the Eastern Pacific is a little cooler than normal. That makes the winds really kind of light in the upper levels. So on the Pacific, from the going from the Pacific side into the Atlantic, well, the Atlantic waters tend to look much warmer than normal this year. Therefore, they're going to want to form storms a little bit easier. And if you have light winds in the upper levels, that's going to allow that to happen. So yeah, I do think we're going to see an active year. Okay. Now, you worked a lot of storms on air. You know, the National Hurricane Center comes out with their advisories and their forecasts. Do you ever disagree with what they come out with and <laughs> how do you handle that? Oh, that is a hot topic. Um, yeah, you know what? It's true. I will sometimes disagree with things. Um, and sometimes I will disagree on the, the, the formation of the storm or maybe sometimes the timing too. Uh, and if so, I, you know, I respect their forecasts, um, but I will also state my own opinion. So I say, I will say something like, you know, I see what the Hurricane Center is, is looking at here, but I also am concerned about this, and then I will add my two cents on, onto that. But I'm not going to just come right out and say they're wrong, because it's really degrees of, of all of us, we're going to be somewhat right, somewhat wrong, and so we're kind of somewhere in the middle. 
A diplomatic answer, indeed. And then let me ask you: out of all the storms you've covered, what was what was the roughest just to work to, to work it on air? Like, and why was it rough? Like, that was easy. That's an easy one. It's got to be Hurricane Harvey. Now, keep in I mind. Knew, I knew you were going to say that. Well, and because a week before, so you know, the storm was like five or six days. Well, the storm for me was a week before. So, you know, my wife came into my office uh, the week before and she, and she sees me and I was literally, my head was in my hands and she's like, what's wrong? What's going on? I said, like, oh, honey, we got, we got problems. This is going to be really bad. So it started there. Now, but the worst part was, so the storm hit on Friday night. On Wednesday, you know, I move into the station and the worst part for me is saying to my wife and to my kids, good luck. You know, I hope you guys survive the storm because uh, I won't see you for another week and a half. And so then I go to work and they're on their own. That's the worst part for me. Now, when you add on with, with Harvey, um, I, I didn't even know what day it was after a while. Once you got from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and I was like, I, we we're still covering the same thing. And so easily Oof. Harvey is the worst and it, is, it was the worst flooding event, you know, in United States history. I, I have to say I was not surprised by that answer just since you're from that area, but I just had to ask. Oh, and there are plenty of other stories that we'll get to as well as other problems that we've had. But uh, I think we're almost out of time for today. But Josh, it was good to learn a little bit more about Dorian and some of that. And we're going to talk more about some historical things coming up in the future and also more about the forecast too. But thanks for joining us today and we will see you next time. Good to see you, Dr. Jim.